Wait, yeah, that's, that's, that's the trade, right? So for Wolf, you can see um, his face and the image moving. Am I working now? <laughs> you can, like, at least hear. Uh, uh, does it work now? <laughs> okay. Okay, I should be good now. We're going back to face cams. Okay, so, once again, apologies for the technical difficulties. I've been having issues. Um, So... This next match is really interesting. It's between Eduardo and David Kutesh, uh, aka Hamster Mania and EMBC. Um, those of you who wait, follow... Wolf, I think I think you're you're still muted. Actually, no. Oh, no, it says he's good. <laughs> um, so this is this is a match that m most of you probably recognize Eduardo. He won internationals in Oceania in 2019. He got top four at Worlds in 2016. He's had a string of accomplishments. He got second at Melbourne this year again. He almost won yeah, back he to almost back. Defended. Yeah, he almost defended, which is very very unusual. I think only is Ashton the only one to defend an international. Did he defend it or did he just win it twice? Oh, I don't know if he won it. He won in what? 17 no, no, no. And 19? Uh, Carson won. In 18. Oh, Carson won in 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he would have been the first person, we believe, to to defend an international, to win back-to-back. -back. Um, huh, yeah, so so he's obviously a very accomplished player. He's a super nice guy. He's got a really cool team this tournament, but he's going up against David Kutesh, aka Hamster Mania. So I don't know that much about Hamster Mania's... What? No. One message in the chat was just, I don't like Marcus. <laughs> But, but some mod deleted it. So, <laughs> thanks, I guess. Yeah. So, Hamster Mania is a player who actually, I think, is very, very, very underrated. He, um, if you guys have played against or are familiar with that Dusclops Gothitelle team, it, it was a team where um, they would often lead Dusclops Gothitelle and go for Fake Out Trick Room turn one or Protect Trick Room and just get basically capitalize on Dusclops' natural bulk um, to get Trick Room up. And then turn two, Dusclops would go for Gravity as Gothitelle went for Hypnosis. Um, it saw play in Dallas, and what was the regional before Dallas? The one in Europe? No, no, the, the one oh, in Europe. Malmö? Malmö, yeah. No. And no, then Malmö before was that was Bochum. Oh, Bochum, yeah. Yeah, um, there he got top 16. Yeah, so he top, I believe he top cut Bochum. Um, but he basically, what I admire most about Hamster Mania is his team building ability. Uh, he's, a, he's a very, very good team builder. He is, he's been known even before... I think live events, he was known for doing well online with these creative teams. Um, if you've played against a Roserade... Oh, I should tell them they can start. Yeah, I was yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, so if you've played against a Roserade, there's a good chance that it was influenced by uh, by Hamster Mania and his team building. I think he builds really cool creative teams, uh, and he's very influential in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, uh, do you guys have anything to add to that? Yeah, also, most notably, like about that Trick Room team, other people just... Like, he, he's also someone who doesn't really hide some of his teams. Like, he laddered a lot with that team online. Then... People saw that, tried to prepare, but he still managed to top cut that regional. And then mm -hmm. other people like just copied the team and also did well at the same event. So just goes to show how phenomenal of a team um, builder he is. Yeah, I think if you were to rate, if you were to think about team builders in terms of like how good they are and how influential they are, like normally you would expect, yeah, like a better team builder would be like more influential. But I think that like, could, like or maybe not good, how well known someone is versus how influential they are, like that you would expect to correlate, right? Um but with Kutesh, I feel like most people don't recognize, like, may, may, maybe people here, like, may, like might not have heard of him before, but he's mm -hmm. they've certainly played against his teams, you know? Yeah. He um, definitely played against the Kutesh team. Uh, yeah. Back in 2018, he was actually known for the Mega Blaziken Bisharp with the Mimikyu and the oh. Explosion Snorlax. That oh, was I lost him. to that. that I lost that up, at Nationals. Yeah, exactly. And that was, like, that. he was the person that, like, really popularized that. And you would see it a lot in, like, high, uh, you know, on online ladders and stuff like that. And also... Um, and Worlds, he's just known as, you know, playing very, very aggressive, like, good at, you know, managing his pressure really well. So in the same vein that his uh, Trick Room team from this season had a, uh, a slower mode that would, you know, get his opponent out of position and then capitalize on the sleep. It also had a aggressive mode with a Togekiss and Gyarados on it as well. And that kind of really uh, was the, you know, keystone of that team that made it really function well. Yeah, we are in team preview, by the way. So... Yeah, with all that, 
that's going into this game. Um, actually, looks like uh, Kutesh has some of those Pokemon that were on that infamous Trick Room team still here. Mm -hmm. As yeah, there is a Dusclops and the Rhyperior, but then looks like yeah, the other Pokemon sw uh, switched a little bit. Togekiss also was on that team, so. Yeah, so about yeah. half, you know, I think something that I noticed a lot is that players will have Pokemon they favor and so oftentimes will use throughout a season. Maybe not on every team, but pretty frequently. Um, I think this matchup is interesting. So the first thing I like to look at when I look at, you know, a team is the speeds. And we notice that each player has one Pokemon that's relatively fast. We have Dragapult from Eduardo and we have Durant actually from Kutesh. Um, I think Incineroar having Intimidated is going to help a lot in this matchup. We mo Like half of... Um, half of Hamster Mania's team are, are these really scary physical attackers, Rhyperior, Conkledor, and Durant. So, um, I, yeah, there's the Incineroar, which is, you know, to be expected at this point. Um, what, mm -hmm. do you guys, what do you guys make of this lead? Yeah, it's good for Edu that he has his Incineroar on the field against the Durant, because, of course, his Togekiss doesn't really like facing that. At the same time, though, Kutash paired up his Durant with Rotom Wash, which is a Pokemon that does pretty well against both Incineroar and Togekiss. So in games like this, it's very important to see who's going to go for Dynamax first, because Durand obviously, yeah, like a prime Pokemon to Dynamax. Uh, it's just not the, as good without the Dynamax. But if you go for it right away and say, Edu, I don't know, went for Parting Shot or something like that, then all of a sudden uh, Durand would already be at minus two. So that's not really something you want to see. And yeah, that's also why I guess Durand is switching out for, in favor of Dusclops right here. Yeah, I think, I think a big part of VGC... Um... Ooh, a Dynamax from the Rotom, actually. Uh, but a big part of VGC 2020 is using your Dynamax effectively, and by having, like, stat drops are a really good way to make sure an opponent d Pokemon does not use their Dynamax effectively. So, you will have to see what happens here. Rotom has, like you mentioned, super effective moves on both Pokemon on the field. Togekiss and Incineroar are both weak to Rotom stabs. I expect probably a Yawn from the Togekiss. Ooh, a Fake Out. That's not what you want to use into a Dynamax Pokemon in a general. Yeah. A good call from Hamster Mania going for Max Lightning, and it actually one-shots the Togekiss. So, if you're Eduardo, you can't be feeling too good about that one. Is that a Life Orb variant? We'll have to see. The Electric Current, current is activated, so that won't boost Rotom's... Um, yeah. It is Life Orb. That's a good call, Justin. I don't know if Eduardo knew that. Um, the Joker on the screen, by the way, guys, is so... Um, there were technical issues with, uh, with um, the Spectator mode, like we mentioned, so... Um, Edu is using is streaming it himself, thankfully. Um, but unfortunately, that does mean that he has to protect his his screen and, and his move. So, Axial comes out here and is Moldbreaker. What do you guys make of that? Moldbreaker Axial in this position is like really good against both of these Pokemon. Um, Dusk, I, barring that the Dusclops doesn't have something like a Will O Wisp or an Ally uh, Switch. It, if it has any type of boosting item, it actually can threaten a knockout onto the the Rotom Wash. If you notice, there's no way to drop stats from Kutesh. There's no Arcanine or Incineroar to switch into. Mm -hmm. So it could just be a counterplay to go for the Max Quake here into the Rotom. But there is also mm -hmm. the fear of the Dusclops going for a Trick Room. So yeah. it's, whether you know it's going to be up to Edu whether or not he has uh, the ability to go for something like Taunt in his uh, Incineroar slot. But I actually like that he has the Incineroar still on the field. It was actually kind of risky to leave it in against both a Durant and a Rotom Wash. Um, but it, it does actually work in his favor if he does have taunt or even to get a possible parting shot off. Yeah, one thing that I do think is interesting here is that Durant is in the back, and Durant is not typically a Pokemon that you want to use outside of Dynamax, and Hamster Mania has adjusted what looks like his initial game plan by Dynamaxing his Rotom instead of his Durant, so if Eduardo can get through this Dynamax and put himself in a in a decent position, um, I think it's not looking as bad as the turn one might imply. We see Max Quake coming out into the Rotom Wash, presumably, not enough for another knockout, and um, yeah, that could be pretty bad for Edu. Say if that Rotom went for Max Geyser here into either slot, would do a lot of damage, though with a special defense boost, I think both Pokemon should be able to take that attack. Mm -hmm. And that's why I mentioned that the Moldbreaker actually needs the boosting item to get the, the knockout on the Rotom Wash. Even the less bulky variants will not get hit. And then you're going to see that Max guys are going to the Incineroar there, but with the plus one defense boost, into a special defense boost from the Max Quake, it actually hangs on. Yeah, that special defense boost is really clutch there. I don't think Eduardo had a better play there. Um, even if he has something like a Swords Dance, it's not necessarily, you know, in his favor um, to not to to not Dynamax there, even though even knowing it won't KO, because having Incineroar stick around, I think, is crucial. We see Dusclops goes for a Trick Room, which to me implies one of two things. Um, either Conkledor or Rhyperior is the fourth Pokemon here. 
Um, so Eduardo has to find a way to manage this trick room, but the good news is that his Excadrill already has a special defense boost, and, you know, this turn I think it's very likely we see something like a Throat, uh, throat Chop into Rotom, mm -hmm. and maybe a Max Steel Spike into Dusclops, making both Pokemon even bulkier. Yeah, another thing in this matchup is that uh, when because those clubs sometimes it's so hard to get off the field without like doubling into it. It's really good that uh, Eduardo chose to get some residual chip into that dust clops, just throat chopping it now, so that way later if he is in a better position he can pick it off. But that's just kind of how that dust clops controls the board sometimes. Like it pressures by being there and you know maybe firing off something like a pain split. So uh, if if he's able to reposition and get the Incineroar out later, he could you know finish it off later with a throat chop. Yeah, um, we actually do see that pain split you were talking about, which kind of nullifies what Eduardo, I think, was trying to do, which was, you know, make it so that he could chip down this Dusclops over time. Pain split is one of those moves that makes Dusclops so hard to remove. It has such low base HP naturally um, that, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's so hard to get off the field um, pretty much regardless. And with, when you add in pain split, it just becomes, you know, there, basically it gives it a great recovery move that also does damage to the opponent. So it's very threatening. We see Eduardo big... going for a parting shot here, which I think is interesting, not opting for... Uh, a Throat Chop potentially KOing the Rotom, and both max moves don't do that much damage. Rotom takes about 40% from Max Geyser, and Dusclops takes about 35% from Max Steel Spike, but um, that damage means less on the Dusclops, knowing that now, knowing now that Dusclops is Pain Split. There's a, it's, Dusclops is just ask, acting as a, uh, a damage sponge there, and being able to Pain Split off, it actually has a way to, to utilize that uh, more so than things that just click Recover or something like Strength Sap, but... Um, Dusclops is a really great partner, actually, with Durant because you can boost both of its defensive stats to make that pain split even more effective where you're tanking a hit and then uh, sapping HP away from the opponent. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think it's interesting that Eduardo is choosing not to KO the Rotom. He had an opportunity last turn, and in theory the turn before as well, to take KO the Rotom. He does go for it. It looks like this turn, yeah, he's going to take out the Rotom this turn, but I like that he didn't let Rhyperior, presumably, or maybe Conkleder come in with too many turns of Trick Room on the board. I think it was really smart for him to wait a turn to KO Rotom, even though it meant he took a little bit more damage. Um, I think I think it was a really good call to not just, you know, focus what was in front of him and instead realize that he couldn't afford to let one of those big Trick Room sweepers in too early. Yeah, you also got some more defense boosts now with the Max Steel Spike. And we already know that Durant is in the back. There is Conkodor, so the final Pokemon of Kutash being revealed. But as we were saying earlier, like the Durant still waiting in the back is actually now a burden. What it allowed um, Kutash to go for that surprise Dynamax on the first turn. Now, yeah, with Hustle um, being in the back, that's yeah not that nice. Also, uh, Incineroar, of course, would have been a Pokemon that is really nice for Edo to keep around until that point. So, yeah, it's just um, going to probably come down to how well Edo can outlast this Trick Room and then how much damage the Durant can do once uh, Trick Room is over again. Yeah, we also think that the Excadrill was able to avoid damage, partially because uh, Kutesh might know the set that he's running. Ed, Ed was streaming yesterday, and we knew that the Excadrill was actually weakness policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he might have known that because he isn't able to take the knockout there, it's better for him to try and you know wait till it's done the Dynamax where he can maybe get a knockout with something like his Kinkelder. So it's actually really nice to have this type of position here with Konkin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But with a with a double defense boost, uh, it should be able to take that Drain Punch, no? Ooh. Wow. Five HP left. Eduardo shaking his hand. And yeah, drain punch combination. So yeah, great play. And I'm expecting Earthquake to come out. And that'll do a ton of damage to both Conqueror and the Dust Clubs. And I think there's only one turn of Trick Room left after this. Uh, the one thing, though, is that, um, you know, Conqueror almost always carry that Mock Punch. So, mm -hmm. you know, extra, although it survived, it's going to be in Mock Punch range from Conqueror. And it all, there's also that Durant in the back, which, you know, although it's. Although you know it does have hustle, which can miss, it is naturally faster than, um, uh, naturally faster than Excadrill. So even though Excadrill survived, it's really important that it did survive because it was able to get the damage off. But yeah, that Rotom kind of looks like a sitting duck here. I feel like if you're David, you could in theory, um, go for a double up into it if you wanted. Maybe Nightshade and Drain Punch or Pain Split and Drain Punch. Although it is plus two defense, as as I recall. So. The defense boosts are really coming in clutch from Eduardo. Uh, that that ex earlier steel spike, first saving Excadrill and now protecting Rotom. There's no real way for Kutesh to uh, lose his position with his Konk and his Dusclops. There isn't the Trick Room expires the next turn, and uh, and even if Incineroar comes in to intimidate something, the Konk is going to 
you know, maybe eat a, eat a Night Punch. But instead, we're going to see a Nightshade actually take the Oh, is that a Night critical hit? That's got to be a critical hit. That's a that's, really yeah, unfortunate that's crit. Game. Um, yeah, that's that's a big crit. Uh, I, I really respect that uh, Hamster Mania went for a Nightshade into the Excadrill. It was so obvious that Eduardo wanted to protect it, but, you know, he covered it anyway. And Eduardo actually, I think it looked like he went for an Earthquake that turn. Um, even mm -hmm. though, of course, it would have knocked out his Rotom because he is Moldbreaker. Uh, it would have put him, if, if he's able to launch that Earthquake, it puts him into a two versus one against Durant, presumably. So um, I do respect that play, and, and I think that was a pretty good one. But unfortunately, he gets crit uh, on the Rotom, which is big. He probably would have done enough damage to Conkledor to put it in range of another attack or, or Dusclops, honestly. Um, both Pokemon were relatively low. So that's a, that's actually a pretty a pretty big crit. Um, and yeah, there's almost no... I, I think there's pretty much no way for him to win from here. So it's unfortunate. you got to be frustrated if you're Eduardo. He played a good game, but... It wasn't enough in the end. Um, and if you're if you're Hamster Mania, you know, you might be feeling not super comfortable about that. I mean, you were able to win, but without the crit, it would have been a lot dicier. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's game one. Yeah, and that's also kind of, yeah, all came down to that first turn where Dynamaxing the, yeah, quote-unquote wrong Pokemon. Because obviously, if you see Durant, it just screams Dynamax because Dynamax moves, the max moves can't miss. And so Hustle is canceled out. You were able to win, but without the crit, it would have been a lot just easier. So reliable at all. Yeah, uh, without That's the game one. Uh, so now for the second game, though, Edo will be aware of this. This obviously, and then also um, on that last turn, both players got a little bit of information as to how their opponent was feeling at that point in the match and how they were playing. As Edo was not protecting his Excadrill, but then Hamstermania was targeting into that Excadrill with Nightshade. Mm -hmm. So that might also give both of them a little bit of a feeling as to how, conf how confident the other player is um, or like how they're trying to play and what, what kind of prediction level they're on. I think in the next game too, it's going to be really important that uh, Edu is able to preserve his Togekiss a little bit better. We saw that the Conkledor duo just did a little bit too much work in that game, especially under Trick Room. Um, and obviously it's, you know, Togekiss can seem a little bit more expendable if they're going to go for the Dusclops Trick Room mode, because had something like Rhyperior came in, uh, it would have been, you know, a little bit less useful and just gotten knocked out maybe right away. Um, but keeping Togekiss around for maybe even the more late game Conkledor and possibly, you know, switching around the Incineroar a little bit more might have been more helpful. Uh, and we're just going to need a little bit more pressure and the leads from ed there i think that the durant and rotom wash put so much pressure into both incineroar and togekiss in game one yeah i wouldn't be surprised if edu went for an excadrill lead this game i was thinking and... maybe dragapult could come out here because token okay. really didn't do anything for eduardo there it got knocked out turn one yeah i think i think excadrill is in a pretty good spot against stuff but yeah it's actually the dragapult togekiss that is coming out here so this lead was something that was pretty popular, like I, uh, around the time at the of the World Champ Invitational. Um, I remember mm -hmm. uh, Vieira actually, the 2015 World Champion Shoma Honami, um, actually used it in in that tournament, and it was it's very dangerous. Um, we see that Dragapult actually is the Life Orb item, um, which makes it a very threatening Pokemon immediately offensively. A lot of players are opting actually for weakness policy Dragapult, but we've already seen that's on Excadrill. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very threatening Pokemon offensively. Who who do you give this lead to? Would you rather be the Rotom Durant player or the Togekiss Dragapult player in this instance? Dragapult Togekiss, for sure. I think that because of the speed advantage and the, uh, there's no real, like, threat in terms of, you have a way to protect the Dragapult with the follow me from the Togekiss. And also, if Durant is a thing that is maxing and you're redirecting, then the only thing that Dragapult is really going to get hit by is normal Rotom. Yeah, exactly. And you also even have the ability, if you want, to max Fant or max um, Wormwind into the Rotom, which would then drop Durant's attack stat. No switches out, or no switches from the, from either player. I think that's interesting. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised to see either Togus or or, or uh, either Rotom or Durant switch out. I'm sorry, I said no switches, but Incinero switched in, which is actually kind of a, a big deal. Eduardo going for the turn two pressure and dropping Durant's attack. Dragonfold Dynamaxes. Do you guys think Phantasm or, or Wormwind here? I think mm. the Phantasm would be smart, but the, the Wormwind makes the more worm sense. Wind. I think Wormwind yeah. is good as well. You really want to... Durant staying on the field and something Dynamax is really implies Durant. Let's see. It's Rotom again. I'm so surprised by that. Wow. Yeah, I guess you got to expect Exodrill to be in the back and then maybe Incineroar. So, makes sense to go with the Rotom. Phantasm. It does a lot of damage. I mean, okay, yeah. so on the one hand, it's very likely that you lose your Incineroar here. I think Iron Head and Max Geyser is a pretty safe play uh, into the, into the you know, 
the token gift slot. Iron Head does come out, and it actually misses on Dragapult. Lightning comes out from Rotom into Snurro. It will survive that. And actually, this turn one went very well for Eduardo. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yeah, yeah Rotom now is definitely in KO range. He got Incineroar on the board. He can now go for the Fagot on Durand if he wanted to. So, yeah, Edu definitely has all the pressure right now. Yeah. And, yeah, Hamster Mania needs to find a way to play out of this position as now he's, yeah, pinned down, essentially. And now here's kind of, like, the chance for Edu to go for, like, a, mo a win more play, like, guarantee mm -hmm. the game, like, here. Like, say he were to call something like a max guard mm -hmm. uh, and, on the f and, like, just switches Incineroar back out to save it for later. Could be really, really detrimental to what Kutesh had planned for this game. But because the Rotom is already at minus one defense, it might just be like, you know, dead weight. So there's a chance that he just goes for an attack anyway. So it's gonna that's kind of that like top player thing where you have to really evaluate what your resources mean at this point in the game. Yeah, Max Guard does come out. We'll see if it were targeted that slot. I do think that yeah. Yeah, Phantasm comes out and does hit into the Max Guard. So I think it would have made sense for Eduardo to target the... <laughs> uh, it would have made sense for Eduardo to target the Durant there. Because of the defense drop that you mentioned, Justin, I think there's a pretty good chance Durant would have gone down. Because although it has a good physical bulk, it's not known for being the most bulky Pokemon due to its low base HP stat. Um, you know, something I just realized, the Durant does not have... Um, the Durant does not, does, not, does not have Life Orb. So perhaps it's yeah. a, a Focus Sash or an Assault Vest set? Mm-hmm. Yeah, once again, um, like, uh, Hamster Mania make the right call with a max guard here, but at the same time, Edu switching his Togekiss into the ground type attack, so, yeah, nothing really happening that last turn, but now gets a big KO on the Dynamax Rotom, and, yeah, I think Focus Sash could be the item of choice there on the Durand. And I think supporting your theory is that Eduardo chooses to go for Dazzle Gleam here, there's a good chance that Eduardo has a better idea of what... Um, what items on the Durant than we do. Something interesting, I think, is that Eduardo once again chose to go for Phantasm rather than Wormwind. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting play because, of course, um, if if you go for Wormwind, then Durant becomes even weaker. So, yep. yeah. And I do want to touch on the fact the turn before where it was kind of a null turn, Max Phantasm went into uh, the Rotom, which Max Garden, and Stomping Tangent went into the Togengus, which was not affected by it. Although it looked like a neutral turn, I think it favored Hamster Mania a bit more than it favored eduardo just because um at that point eduardo was kind of in the driver's seat with his dynamax and if you take in the ko on durant there he's then able to take rotom next turn and make it a four versus two um whereas yeah like in in this situation now dynamax is over and he only took one ko rather than two hmm yeah but he doesn't have any move on the dragapult to get the ko on durant so durant has one more chance to go for an attack hits the iron head but thanks to the babiri berry uh Tobikus, yeah it doesn't take that much damage here so See, pretty flinches. bulky. Uh, oh. Actually, there's a good chance that, that that actually works out better for Eduardo than if he'd gone for a Dazzle Gleam and taken the kill, the KO. Excuse me. Um, the reason being is, imagine it's Rhyperior as the last Pokemon there. Uh, Eduardo's gonna have to. If, assu oh, assuming it's weakness policy, Rhyperior, of course. Eduardo is gonna have to be really careful with how he deals with it because all of none of his Pokemon want to take a, a Rock Slide pl at plus two. And although he has Incineroar on the back. Um, yeah, he really has to be careful with, with how he uses it. So perhaps not taking a KO there actually works out better for him because yeah. Dragapult, of course, or Dusclops, of course, can go for a Nightshade or a Pain Split, probably a Nightshade into Dragapult if I had to guess. Um, but f other than that, there's like Eduardo gets to Dazzling Gleam this turn, take out Durant, probably, and then maybe go for a Phantom Force to waste even yeah. more turns of Trick Room. Um, he could, uh, could, Hamster Mania could go for Pain Split into Durant here, guys. I think that's actually kind of an interesting play. Heal yeah, that would ensure. Up. That would give Durant yet another chance um, if Togekiss just goes for Dazzling Gleam. However, if it, say, oh. went for an Air Slash, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what information Hamster Mania has, then, yeah, that wouldn't be enough to get the knockout. So, no, instead, it's just going to be Nightshade into the Togekiss. And Edu switching out his Dragapult didn't want to go for that Phantom Force that you mentioned. Now, also means that he won't be able to get an Intimidate on whatever uh, Hamster Mania's last Pokemon is in the next turn. Yeah. The the one thing but is he gets fake already. Yeah. He gets fake out pressure exactly. What do you make of this, Justin? Well, like I said, um, it, in the event that there was a, a trick room mode that was threatening to Edu with the Conkleder, like if Conkleder comes in here, then the Togekiss is like very essential towards the late game. So it's better that he was able to protect his Togekiss a little bit more, um, and even preserve a little bit of fake out pressure. So like that, that's really just masterful play there from from Ed. I really want to say that um. Kutesh just let things get a little bit out of hand uh, against Dragapult, and that's kind of the nature of this matchup. 
uh, you sometimes you're trying to protect against maybe the Venusaur, and sometimes you're trying mm. to protect against the possibility of a Moldbreaker Exodrill. But instead, we're going to see this late game Trick Room be the option that Kutesh has to go for. And I don't think he has enough gas in the tank to to pull it off. Yeah, especially with that Yawn coming out on the Conkleder, it's going to be pretty good, I think, for. Uh, Eduardo, I think that was a really smart move. One thing actually I was about to touch on that Eduardo doesn't do is that you want a Dazzling Gleam to weaken the Conkleder, but then you're weakening Dusclops, which then makes Pain Split stronger mm -hmm. uh, on whatever Eduardo's fourth Pokemon that is full HP uh, is in the back. So I actually really, I didn't, I wasn't, I couldn't remember if he had Yawn or not, but I really like that play there. Um, we see now why Eduardo wanted to bring in Fake Out because it allows that play. And although Dusclops is very bulky, um, it's not it's not a Pokemon that you really want to have against against the world. You know, when your back's against the wall, you really don't. Uh, there's better Pokemon to have than Dusclops, and a Sleeping Conkleder will make this at least for a turn a one versus uh, two for on the field. Yeah. And, you know, maybe even a one versus four. And the Dragon so. comes back in here, and Togekiss is going to switch out a double switch here. The patented Wolf Glick, uh, Rotom Wash coming mm. out here too it's gonna have to you know weather the storm of damage that's gonna be coming out of both the dust clops and the concrete there but uh cycling intimidate will definitely help that work out drain punch gonna go into that dragapult slot and now the concrete will be asleep yeah that was a yeah, really so, good switch from eduardo yeah seeing seeing that yawn on the concordor also goes like shows us that eduardo has a little bit of an idea of what he's going up against mm -hmm. of course concordor could be carrying flame orb um, but we also already saw that in the first game, I believe, that it does, didn't do that. But um, another play that you can actually make to prevent Yawn from like um, putting Conkledo to sleep would be like Will O' Wisping yourself um, if it had guts and if Dusclops had Will O' Wisp. So yeah, it's it's a play that you uh, well you need to know what you're doing if you want to go for a Yawn on that Conkledo. But yeah, it worked out perfectly in Ed's favor. So yeah, I'm guessing he had a little bit of information going into this match. And now, as long as he can get one KO, he should be, yeah, be set up to just take the game home. But Dusclops just being the bulky Pokemon that it is, um, yeah, will make things a little harder. That was yeah, some deductive reasoning, now. too. Ed obviously saw that the Pain Split and the, the Nightshade were already there. So once the Trick Room went off, uh, you would assume that with Rhyperior that the last move is going to be Bulldoze. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably why you had the room to go for the Yawn there. I really like that. Yeah, there was also a point in game one where Dusclops is nightshading and pain splitting instead of Willow Wisping Eduardo's Excadrill. So, although yep. you never want to read into things too much, that is a pretty good sign. We actually saw um, Hamster Mania reverse their own Trick Room on the last turn. I think they might have forgotten or uh, how many turns were left, or maybe they're just conceded. But um, yeah, we actually do see Eduardo double into Dusclops here. Conglutter gets the one turn sleep. It's going to be able to go for a Drain Punch, but against Togengus, Rotom, and Dragapult, I just don't think it's going to be enough, especially with the Citrus Berry on the. Rotom still intact. So Eduardo's looking like he's going to take this game. Touching a little bit on what you were talking about, Marcus. Um, t normally, um, Conkleder run one of three-ish items, although there's room for others. It's normally probably Flame Orb and Assault Fist are the most common, and we did see some Life Orb as well. We saw Febzy actually um, using Life Orb on their Conkleder, but we know that the Life Orb is on the Rotom, and we know that the Conkleder does not have Flame Orb from game one. So it looks pretty likely, and we'll probably be able to tell from the damage here whether or not um, this is a fair assumption, but yeah, it's looking like this Conkleder may have the Assault Vest item. Yeah. Which again, supporting what you said earlier, makes the Yawn very safe. Thunderbolt coming out here. Let's see how much it does. If it's Assault Vest, it should do like 30. Yeah, that's probably Assault Vest. Gets the Paralysis. Eduardo Grimacing. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Paralysis is actually kind of bad there because Dra uh, Drain Punch could, of course, maybe KO Rotom with a Guts Boost, but it uh, it doesn't end up mattering probably because of Togengus in the back and also because of the Paralysis. So we're going to game three. What do you yeah. guys make of this? I really like the adjustments that Eduardo made there. The specifically the Dragapult. Uh, I'm glad that you brought it up in the pregame. Um, when I was talking about the Togekiss, it was more just for the Conkleder, but the immediate pressure against Rotom is really good, and the option to go for Max Wormwind to reduce a possible Durant Max mm -hmm. uh, is is great. So I, I do like that adjustment from Eduardo. I, I don't know exactly why he didn't do it in Game One, outside of maybe the fear of a Togekiss Durant lead. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's actually what Kutesh is going to end up going with. Yeah, something that I think we have to talk about is that Durant, right? Um, on the one hand, you know, like you understand, you you can understand why, uh, you know, why a player would want to bring it. But um, Hamster Mania has now brought this thing, brought this Pokemon twice, <laughs> and he hasn't Dynamaxed it. He's gone for an Iron Head was missed, a stopping yeah. tantrum. He didn't use it in the end game one because it switched out and then didn't have to come back in. So. Do you think do you think Durant is still coming? Do you think Hamster Mania thinks that it's worth covering options, or or is it or is it dead weight? Is he gonna Dynamax the Rotom again? 
Yeah, that those two games really just show why Durant was never a factor before Dynamax was implemented. <laughs> so yeah, I'm also curious to see whether he maybe he could also try and go for more like hardcore trick room approach, bringing that Rapirior, maybe leading say with Togekiss, Dust Gloves, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so far it looks like this weird <laughs> Dynamaxing the Rotom looked like his game plan in here. But yeah, with that Dragapult. Coming out from Eduardo, I don't think that's really an option for him for the third game. So I would be very surprised if we saw the same Rotom Durant lead coming out of uh, Hamster Mania once again. Yeah, it feels like Rotom has been good, but Durant has not been great. Though we did see now that Dragapult two shot. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, we do see that that Durant or to Rotom is two shot by Max Dragapult. Um, we do see. Okay, this looks like a more dedicated Durant lead. I definitely expect Durant to Dynamax um, in this instance. Yeah. And the Venusaur adaption coming out from Edu, so oh, that that opens up a lot of more plays, obviously, with Sleep Powder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, something you can do with the Dragapult and Venusaur lead that is pretty deadly is uh, going for the max airstream and then Sleep Powdering before the opponent can attack you. However, yeah, Togekiss could just draw away all the attention this turn. Yeah. But, yeah, the air. The thing is, though, of course, that um, you run the option of going for max airstream into Togengus and sludge bomb into Togengus, doubling it and potentially knocking it out turn one. And of course, Durant can maybe knock out the Venusaur. Although without a life orb, I'm not actually sure. I, I, Venusaur is not the frailest Pokemon. I think there's. Mm. A, I mean, I just don't know my calculations, but I'm sure the players do. We see Dragapult yep. Dynamaxing here. Um, it's most likely going to go for either airstream or Phantasm. You're probably not worm winding in front of these two. You could max guard, but I don't think it really gets you much. Eduardo's shaking his head though. I yeah, this I'm could actually be, kind of scared be about. Togekiss, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I had the same thought. <laughs> Don't want to jinx it, but let's yeah. see. Max Another Togekiss. fear I have is that the Durant is actually Focus Sash because that's something that's been popping up in uh, some of these teams around. Yeah, um, I think Sash Durant makes sense um, for sure. We do see Durant Dynamax. I think that's probably better for Eduardo than uh, than Togekiss Dynamaxing. Yeah. And he does go for that Airstream play we mentioned. Now, the question is, does he no go for the Durant? Oh... Okay. So, yeah, if this is Sleep Powder into Durant, this could be pretty huge here. Yeah, it could be Yawn, by the way. It could be Sleep Powder into Durant and then Yawn into Togekiss. Let's see. Sleep Powder comes out, it connects, Eduardo shakes his fist. Togekiss is going to take a nap here, but what did that Durant go for? It's Probably that Max Steel on. Spike. There it is. Eduardo fist pumping. Fist pumping. Really happy about this. Oh, Venusaur goes down, but Eduardo still seems happy about that. Oh, with a critical hit. I don't know if that mattered. Um, Huh. I wonder why Eduardo feels that's a good trade. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very curious um, about that one because Venusaur and, on paper, you know, Eduardo lost a Pokemon, and although Togekiss fell asleep, it's mm. it's a bulky Pokemon. Now it has a defense boost, so it's not the, it's not the easiest to get rid of. Yeah, I Mario mean, even if he had run. Wash in the back, he might have the pressure that he needs. Oh well, he doesn't. But yeah. well, we also yeah, he didn't bring it in. Yeah, Max Bug is pretty good against Rotom as well. So Incineroar comes in; it's super effective against these Pokemon. It probably takes a Rock move if Eduardo's bringing it in here. Um, now you have to start worrying about Togekiss getting, uh, getting, getting a one turn sleep and being really, really annoying. So, yeah, I, th I actually feel like this one could go either way. I think this next turn is going to be huge. It's the second turn of Dynamax, and there's a lot of there's a lot of offensive pressure on the field. Yeah, I think. For Edu to, like, that first turn, to make it worth for him, he would need his opponent's Togekiss to sleep for a little while. Yeah. Because if Togekiss out, wakes up here, this could be really bad for him. Yeah. I, it, it, it's normal, we'll probably take Max Rockfall or Max... We know it has Max Quake at the very least. Um, we get, But, yeah, the, I don't know if it will take a, a boosted... Uh, another attack from there. Max Steel Spike comes out again into the Dragapult, so... Uh, Hamster Mania choosing to ignore the Incineroar here, They're boosting the defense stats back to plus one, where they were plus two, or plus plus one, then plus zero, now back to plus one. Togus stays asleep, Eduardo's really happy about that one, and presumably Flare Blitz comes out here. It's plus one Durant, but it's a four times super effective attack. Durant goes yep. down, and we see now why Eduardo you went for Airstream into Durant turn one. Um, that sleep is huge. If Togus wakes up there, it's going to do a lot of damage. Um, it's going to do a ton of damage, and so that sleep is crucial. And we now know that Togekiss is in range of another Max Phantasm because the first one did a little over fifty percent. So, yeah, this is going to be uh, this is going to be this is going to be interesting. But if you're Eduardo, you can't feel that bad about it. But now I think we're going to see the late game mode, which is that uh, that trick room. I, I expect probably Dusclops to come in here. 
Yeah, yeah it's, if there's no Rotom Wash on the back, then I don't mind that the uh, Togekiss stayed asleep and didn't knock out the Dragapult. But if mm -hmm. there is a Rotom Wash, it actually seems possibly kind of hard for Ed to break just with the Pokemon that he ended up bringing. Uh, so it's it's good to see that uh, instead Kutesh actually brought the Trick Room mode here. Uh, it kind of just makes the impact of that sleep turn a little bit lower. And Dragapult is going to get, would have probably still gotten one turn of Dynamax off, I had barring maybe like a Dazzling Gleam, gleam crit. Uh, so. Mm. You know, the, the impact of the situation now is how does he manage the attack stat of the Conkledur? So does he have the option to maybe switch back into uh, into a Togekiss um, and then preserve the uh, Intimidate? Yeah, I think I think this might be um, Max Ghost, Max Phantasm into the Togekiss and then Parting Shot. Because yeah. then that would leave Hamster Mania with just two Pokemon remaining. Incinero could then come back in again and that would be um, at least minus two attack on the Conkledur that it cannot get rid of. And yeah, depending on that last Pokemon on Edu, I think actually we saw, uh, could see it for a little second there. It looked um, like that Togekiss, didn't it? Yeah, so that's a fantastic position for Eduaru, especially if that last Pokemon is just that Dusclops, which doesn't really do a lot of, or doesn't have any offensive pressure, really. Yeah, we also have to note, Marcus, that, you know, we did see that that Conkleder just got a defense drop from Max Phantasm, even though, of course, yep. the main point of that was to KO the Togekiss. The defense drop is not great there. Uh, by any means for that Conkleder. So maybe something like a Phantom Force and a Dazzling Gleam this turn could definitely... Oh, it's Rotom! Oh, okay. Well, Phantom Force hmm. plus Dazzling Gleam will probably still do enough, but now the question is, we saw Max Lightning in Game 1 take out Togekiss in one shot. How much is regular Thunderbolt going to do to this Togekiss? How bulky is this Togekiss? We know Rotom outspeeds it. It does have a, a it does do a lot of damage. Uh, it doesn't get the KO. Uh, it, usually, Togekiss is going to be EV to to live that. And yep. as I was talking about before, Rotom Wash is actually kind of hard to break without Dragapult. So managing the Dragapult here in the late game is going to be very important. This game might have been all but wrapped if we saw Dusclops mm -hmm. come out, but instead, Rotom Wash uh, pressures pretty much everything, especially if it's carrying something like Dark Pulse. Which uh, some of the Pokemon, uh, some of the Rotom Washes we've seen in the past have been known to do. Yeah, yeah uh, follow me comes out. Dragon Darts, and yeah, then Dragon he wants to go for Phantom Force the next turn. And Fake Out, maybe? To do maximum damage against that Rotom. Ooh, it's not a 2 at KO, even with the defense drop. Let's see, is it a Thunderbolt? It is. Is Togengus going to survive from this? It does. You're Yeah, pretty handily, actually. It survives. Let's see if there's a full Paralysis. Ice Punch comes out, so yeah, we do know now that Conkleder is Ice Punch. Um, this is looking tricky. This is looking really tricky. Uh, it looks like it's going to be close, whether or not the, um, whether or not the 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 second Dragon Arts will KO the Rotom, but it's very very important here. Although, if Eduardo goes for Fake Out into Conkleder and Dragon Arts, is there really anything that, you know, Hamster Mania can do? Well, if he has Dark Pulse, he could get the knockout on Dragapult. Ooh, Dragon Darts did less than I remembered as well. This is a really tricky situation. Hmm. You, so you could go for the Fake Out and Dragon Darts into Conqueror, which would probably knock it out. Yeah. But the thing is, you're, you're betting it all on a Hydro Pump miss at that point, right? Because Thunderbolt, even Life Orb Thunderbolt has a good chance after another turn of Life Orb Recoil to... Um, to KO, but if you're if you're Hamster Mania here, you're kind of in a tough position as well because what if Eduardo goes for Fake Out into Conkleder and then Phantom Force yeah. into Rotom, and you go if you yep. go for, if you attack into that slot, you could very easily lose the game. Um, and if you go for Hydro Pump into, into Incineroar to try and cover that, and it's just Fake Out Dragon Darts, um, yeah, then you could lose the game anyway. So uh, it looks like Eduardo chooses to double into the Rotom here. The only question is, did he go for the Dragon Darts or did he go for the Phantom Force. Fake out does a lot of damage. He shakes his head. It's not enough for the KO. Most likely, Dragon Darts coming out here. Rotom barely hangs on. Oh no! Dragon Darts yeah, Conkleder barely hangs on. Life Orb activates. Is it this ice, is punch? ice Punch? It's Ice Punch. Ah, uh, huh. Dragapult's gonna go down to that. Now it actually is not over, but it's it's not looking great for Eduardo. Yeah, that was a really yeah. fantastic play there from Kutesh. I have to give props to him. Um, it was one of those situations where there was a couple of ways that Ed could have like maximized his value in that turn um, and possibly locked up an endgame. I think that initially the uh, fake out into Rotom and then Phantom Force into the Rotom actually might have been really scary, but uh, th that you do risk the Conqueror actually getting the KO there instead. So yeah. um, it kind of turns into like a really really complex 50 50 with a couple different options and i've got wait a, a second. Is this? wait a second <laughs> okay well 
uh yeah like you were sorry not to cut you off but this game is not over actually hydro pump missing twice is the one way that eduardo can win this uh it's definitely in range of a hydro pump but i'm actually really surprised to see that um hamster mania didn't go for thunderbolt and mock punch that felt like a pretty safe move um and, and barred the option of a double hydro pump miss but maybe hamster mania just assumed that they would hit one of the hydro pumps second hydro pump comes out and oh, misses wow. oh my gosh wow oh my goodness and eduardo embc advances to top 16 <laughs> wow <Incredible. sighs> that was an incredible set um yeah that's pretty heartbreaking obviously yeah. for Amsterdam. Yeah. at the same time though yeah edu really played himself into a nice end game position then wasn't quite able to convert yeah and well <laughs> we saw what happened from there um yeah i mean